G'day guys and gal. If you know a bit about me, you probably know that I and GW haven't had the nicest of relationships. The one and only communication I've actually had with them was a cease and desist letter for selling a bunch of Warhammer inspired hentai calendars, which you know, it's fair enough. On top of that, they've done some pretty retarded shit in the last few years, destroying the fan animation community, hence wiping out millions of dollars of free marketing from themselves. They also have extremely overpriced products as a result of their low key monopoly on the market. How they can justify a couple dice costing $66 is obscene. So that begs the question, do they deserve your support? Are we encouraging bad business behavior by buying into this model? Or do we owe it to them for creating such an awesome universe that brings each and every one of us so much joy and satisfaction? After all, if GW dies, so does Warhammer. The goal of this video isn't to shill for or shit on GW for the sake of pushing an agenda. I'll be highlighting some GW stuff ups to give a balanced broad perspective on if Games Workshop is a brand worth supporting. Let's get into it. Before we get into the juicy business ethics stuff, I want to first look at them from a raw business perspective in regards to their pricing and whatnot. Who knows, maybe they can justify their inflated prices due to a large amount of costs they incur as a big business. In 2021, GW clocked in about 450 million US dollars. This continues a significant increase of revenue GW has been enjoying for the past four years after they spent a decade in complete stagnation. More on why they were able to turn this around later. For this revenue, they had an operating profit of around 40%, which is retardedly high. Like, holy shit. For every dollar you're giving to Games Workshop, their shareholders are pocketing 40 cents. For context, 10 to 20% profit is considered average and Google does about 25%. So the answer is yes, they are overpriced. The price increases and shit value for recent releases is not justified. If they have been heavily investing in remastering, overhauling and expanding the range, giving Tyranid and Tau players entire new refresh armies, whilst ensuring no official playable models allowed to become more than a decade out of date, then maybe they could justify it. They would have to spend more money and effort obviously, but with a 40% profit margin, they definitely have room to employ. This huge amount of profit makes stuff like the pretty mere quality of most Warhammer Plus animations laughable. They literally pull in enough yearly profit to make a high budget series that they could put on Netflix or something, even just getting in a Stardy series made. Look how successful Arcane was, yet instead they put all their animation on a failing subscription service. Before I get sidetracked and start moving on to the next point, I want to highlight just how profitable GW's miniatures are. I've seen recasting websites before, where they basically just create a mold of official models and sell them at a discounted rate. Blatant illegal stealing. However, the recaster's sale price, that generally being about one third to one fifth of the price of GW models, shows just how much of a markup GW is using. Sure, a 50% or even 100% markup could seem reasonable. After all, GW has more overheads, and most recasters live in countries where $100 will buy you a house, a car, and three wives but a 300 to 500% markup is nutty. I want to quickly talk about recasting. A lot of people see it as the solution to GW's crazy prices, but it's really not. I'll admit it, some time ago I bought a squad from a recaster more out of curiosity and I genuinely regretted it. If GW is going to get put out of business, it shouldn't be because their copyright and trademark has been stolen and resold at a massive discount. Secondly, the quality never compares to official models. Even the best recasts will have imperfections that will bug the shit out of you as you paint the model. By the time the model is finished, you'll just feel frustrated that you spent hours working on an inferior copy. I straight up threw out the recasts and went to my local GW to buy it all in official. Proxies on the other hand are great, and I'm not saying that just because I sell them. For those that don't know, proxy models are when someone draws inspiration from artwork, lore, or an official model in order to create their own rendition of it from scratch. This is a great option as many GW models are stupidly outdated, look crap, and are due to receive an update any minute now. So it's hard to justify buying an ugly ass old Saurus army when you can just spend half the money on significantly more attractive proxies. A personal example was when I finally started painting my Guardians. GW released the updated and much prettier versions like a week later. Fortunately, the old Guardians still fit in decently, but I imagine that the new Saurus that eventually come out will look so much better. 
Now, GW did recently come out with a bit of a bullshit rule, stating that all models and bits used in GW stores or tournaments have to be from official products. Previously, there was like a common sense rule where your army had to be like 80% official. However, since very few people are playing in tournaments or even at GW stores, then I don't think it's a big deal. I'd take pretty dinosaurs over a GW store any day. So yeah, recast bad, proxies good. If anything, a good proxy tells GW to get their head out of their ass and start updating their sculpts. Also, as most proxies are 3D printed, the quality is really good. GW Paint is also in a similar boat, way more expensive than other brands. Maybe I'm just being salty that Australians pay the second highest amount for GW products, behind New Zealand. You poor sheep fucking bastards. So with such pricey products, does the quality hold up? Straight up, Warhammer sculpts are fucking elite. The new avatar of Kane makes me coom. Pretty much every new Age of Sigma model is a work of art, and the Space Marines finally don't look awkward as hell. The GW plastic is good quality. You barely get any mold lines or loss of detail, especially on newer kits. Even my old ass Guardians and Dire Avengers still hold up. Their paint continues this trend. I use a combo of Vallejo, if that's how you say it, paint and GW paint. While some of my Vallejo paint is awesome and easily fulfills the role of a more expensive GW paint, most of the time GW paint is superior. Whether it be its texture, color or usability, I always find myself going past my GW store for paint as the two paint packs I got from Vallejo don't do it for me. It's also kind of difficult when every painting tutorial for Warhammer minis only uses GW paint but not a huge deal. If only they didn't put them in those fucking shit bottles that dry out like a granny's minge in the Sahara Desert. Okay, getting away from the financial and product side of things, should you support GW from a goodwill standpoint? Well, GW was actually on a bit of a good streak that kicked off in 2017, when they started getting more intelligent about how to give other companies their license. Games like Total War Warhammer and Vermintide were launched, which reignited a lot of old and new fans' interest in the setting. Total War Warhammer 1 was what got me back into the hobby. Sadly, we returned to find Warhammer Fantasy dead, but oh well. The launch of Age of Sigma, although controversial, ended up being a good business decision. The models and lore coming out of that these days is really good. On top of that, 8th edition for 40k was launched, bringing with it the also controversial Primaris Marines. However, the new models looked great, and they were a much needed upgrade from the out of proportion older Marine models. GW just loves its controversial launches, doesn't it? I reckon they come up with a good idea and then they think, okay, sweet, so how do we piss a bunch of people off? Overall, this resulted in soaring revenue and profit. The lore of 40k also got a good shakeup with the fall of Cadia, creation of the Great Rift, and the resurrection of Gilliman. All in all, a couple good years, and to their credit, the quality of the lore and writing continues to be very good. In recent times, the long neglected Xeno factions have been getting some good love. Their Necrons were remastered and sold in the highly in demand Indomitus box, whilst the Elder also recently got a pretty decent remaster. It genuinely seems like the meme of a big release every month just being another Primaris Lieutenant has finally died. However, GW being GW, they just had to fuck up the goodwill. GW decided that millions of dollars of free marketing via fan animations on YouTube was for pansy ass cocksuckers. So they decided to basically issue an ultimatum to each animator. Either cease all monetization of any fan made content or delete all your videos and come work for us. For creators like Astartes and Lost Legion, the guys that made Exodite, this deal kind of makes sense and they are probably getting paid pretty well for it. However, for all the other animators it sucked. GW was just offering them token jobs like animating social media posts or website banners. Some of them they just ghosted, leaving the animator out alone with no content and no job. They were also bound by NDA so they couldn't actually tell their audience what was going on. The final slap in the face was the release of Warhammer Plus, their own streaming service which made their motives clear. Originally, they said they had to protect their IP, so couldn't allow people to just make fan content, but that's bullshit. There are numerous franchises that allow people to monetize fan content, and I've never seen any of them have any IP issues. On top of that, GW could have just given them a fan license for them to make non-canon works. However, the real motive was to make it so Warhammer Plus was the only place you could see Warhammer animation, hence hoping it would pull people in. This had the opposite effect. Warhammer Plus experienced a solid boycott with a huge chunk of Warhammer fans shunning it. Pretty much every content creator shat on it and directed their audience away from it, with Alpha Boozer ending his legendary TTS series in a direct response. 
Hence, all in all, Warhammer Plus was a bit of a flop. I was able to gather bits of behind the scenes info via some documentation and insider scoop, which indicates that GW regrets the way they handled the animated takeovers, and they've even quietly removed the fan content restrictions. Meaning if you want to make and potentially monetize a Warhammer animation or fan content, you can probably do so. Just look at Janovich's Vrax animation. I say quietly because whilst originally they were going to make an announcement about the matter, they decided to bitch it and just stop enforcing their copyright on fan animators. Interestingly enough though, in their latest shareholders report, they have indicated a massive policy change. They are now looking to champion and encourage fan content. I spoke with a contact recently who works with GW and he was surprised to see that they were becoming open to letting content creators get early access and insider scoop on the upcoming projects and products. Previously, speaking the word content creator to Games Workshop would be like saying Hell Hitler in front of a Holocaust survivor. It just made them shudder in fear and disgust. For example, Midwinter Minis partnered with GW and had an NDA with them a few years back, and he decided to terminate it because it was actually worse than being a normal customer. So hopefully whatever they've got in store will really open things up. If they had a system like Creative Assembly, that would be good. I mean, not that good because Sierra refused to work with me, but you get what I mean. GW's fuckery in recent times has hit their bottom line, with their revenue staying flat and a slight decrease in profit, leading to a significant drop in share price. This doesn't sound too crazy, considering how many other brands got absolutely sodomized by Nurgle's rot. But when you compare it to their trajectory and growth, especially considering they had a huge boom during COVID, it does seem to have come to a screeching halt. The death of the Warhammer fan animation community signaled the end of the golden age, as well as GW's obscene revenue and profit growth. So this begs the question, should you support Games Workshop? Do they deserve your money? Not exactly a yes or no type of situation. None of us really want GW to go bankrupt or start losing money so they freak out and only release Primaris for the next 10 years. However, they are a cold, ruthless business that follows the money. The community backlash and boycott of Warhammer Plus as a result of their self-admitted mishandling of the situation has resulted in them becoming open-minded to working with content creators after seeing what a powerful force they represent. They also chilled out, meaning people can start making 40k animations again. If we had all just bought into Warhammer Plus, they would have laughed their way to the bank and put in even more obscene restrictions on fan creators. In a similar vein, the popularity of the Indominatus box showed that people really wanted new Xeno models. So when the new Elder models came out, I bought a couple hundred dollars worth, and I plan on getting more when I finish painting them. That's another thing you can do if you're shitty at GW but love Warhammer, paint your backlog. This way you can save money, enjoy the hobby, and stop feeling guilty about the ever-increasing pile of plastic tucked away in your box of shame. If a good Warhammer game comes out, buy it. If not, then don't. This might sound a bit no shit Sherlock, but if we reward GW's good behavior and punish its shit behavior, then theoretically the company will continue to improve. In my opinion, Wendigo835 is handling his relationship with GW in the best way possible. He has a 2000 point Elder army, and even uses the same obscure craft world as me. His army is mostly Aspect Warriors, hence his Dire Avengers, Ortarch, Farseer, Dark Reapers, and Vehicles are all official models. However, his Fire Dragons, Banshees, Striking Scorpions, and Warp Spiders are all proxy models, because their official variants are old as fuck Forge World Resin, which is known for its poor quality. And the models themselves look pretty ugly. This is how you do it. Buy the models that look good, get proxies for the shit neglected models, paint your backlog, buy good Warhammer games, and shit on trashy greedy ones. Criticize GW's mistakes and celebrate their successes. Don't buy recasts because that's fucking illegal and just use common sense. GW is not and never will be perfect, but let's be honest, we are Warhammer fans. Our standards are a lot lower than perfect. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. We're only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of Battle Mace 40 million hentai. Or maybe it's not hentai, I don't think it comes from Japan. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more shit content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.